Who are the Red Sox going to take in the first round of the 2023 draft? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin, and we're about a week away from the 2023 MLB Draft. It starts on July 9th and ends July 11th at the start of the MLB All-Star Game. And the Red Sox, for the first round, have the 14th pick in the draft. Not terrible, not the best, just kind of dead in the middle there in terms of draft picks. And when it comes to mock-ups and previews, everyone seems to have the Boston Red Sox taking someone else. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to break it all down. We're going to talk about about the top candidates for the Red Sox to draft in 2023. We're going to talk about why they could be a possible fit, what the Red Sox line of thinking may be, and we're going to try and ultimately decide who we think the Boston Red Sox should draft in the first round of the 2023 MLB draft. But before we get into that, just a heads up, we are going to be live tomorrow night on this channel right around 7 p.m. Eastern time. There is supposed to be a Red Sox Marlins game going on, so we're going to watch that together. We're also going to be talking about the draft, the all-star game, and and really the Red Sox season in general. So if you haven't been to one yet, I highly recommend it. Again, that is going to be tomorrow night, right around 7 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. With the 14th pick in the first round of this year's draft, the Boston Red Sox have a couple different ways of approaching it. So what we're going to do in today's video is we're going to break it into different categories. The first would be to go after the youngest, most athletic player in the draft, like we've seen the past couple years, right? With Mikey Romero and Marcelo Meyer, they could continue that philosophy, which has worked pretty well into the 2023 draft. And there are a couple of candidates that people think the Red Sox may target in this category. The first is Kevin McGonigal, a shortstop at a Monsignor Bonner High who Keith Law mentioned as a possible Red Sox draft pick. Kevin is a senior committed to Auburn next year, who is a hit first type prospect. In his senior year, he hit 474 with a 647 on base percentage and an 894 slug with seven home runs, five doubles, and two triples. The most impressive part of his game is his bat to ball skills. He does have some pop and it definitely, you do see some raw power potential in there, but for the most part so far, he has been a very gap to gap type hitter. And most scouts believe that he won't be a super slugger at the big league level, but he will be a very good bat to ball type hitter that drives the ball gap to gap. Now, defensively, he's fairly decent. He's got really quick hands and a fairly decent arm, but most scouts do predict that he'll eventually move off of the shortstop position more into a second base type role, maybe a corner outfield type role. However, there's one thing that scouts have really highlighted with Kevin, and that's his baseball IQ. Keith actually specifically mentions this in his column about this kid. His baseball IQ is is very natural and it's very very strong right this is a guy who naturally understands the game of baseball it's inner workings and it makes him really really great on the field at the plate and on the base pass this is a guy who you could easily see the Red Sox taken as their first pick the second option in this category would be, would be to go with a kid like Colin Hout another shortstop out of high school who the baseball prospect journal mentioned as a potential Red Sox draftee in high school this year he hit 487 with a 589 on base percentage and an 857 slug. He had more walks than he did strikeouts his senior year, and he's a lot of raw power to that pull side, which some people believe will translate into all field power as he matures and gets older and puts on more muscle mass and stuff like that. So this kid also gets on base a ton and his bat ball skills are really good, and he has the potential to be a above average power type hitter. Now on the field, he has a pretty good glove and a really strong arm that most scouts do believe that if the Red Sox do choose so, he could stick at shortstop throughout his entire major league and minor league career. So that's the first option, right? Continue sort of with your pattern of taking the youngest, most athletic player in the draft, or the Red Sox could go a different way. And the one way they could go is one that we saw with Nick York, which is basically just taking the best overall hitter in the number 14 spot. And there are a couple options there as well. Now, these are guys that are both shortstop, but they are college shortstops, which we'll explain why that's a bit different in a second. The first guy in this category would be Jacob Wilson, a shortstop out of Grand Canyon University, who is mentioned by ESPN as a potential Red Sox draftee. He's a shortstop who hit for 411 last year with 17 doubles, four triples, and six home runs. He doesn't have the power upside that a lot of players on this list may have, but his bat to ball skills are really impressive. He also is some of the best plate discipline of this entire draft class, and some scouts even say it is 
is the best plate discipline of this entire draft class. This is a guy who gets on base constantly and is a grinder. He's the type of guy who's going to give you a long at bat, push the ball up the middle when he needs to. He can hit a gap when he needs to. And at the very least, there is a potential for him to put it over the fence every once in a while. Now on the field, he has a really, really strong arm that most scouts believe it will be viable to be a athletic MLB shortstop. But there's one thing mentioned about this guy in every single article, and that is that he's a grinder. He's the type of player that's going to put his body on the line. He's the type of player that's going to play hard all nine innings. This is the type of player that I think personality wise would fit really, really well in Boston. On top of that, he is a college shortstop, which means that if the Red Sox were to draft him, we wouldn't have to wait four or five years until he's MLB ready. This is a guy who you could slot in fairly high within the Red Sox farm system and see him in the next three years. So that's something to keep in mind as well. The other option in this category for just the simple best bat available, again, is a college shortstop. This is a guy by the name of Matt Shaw that MLB.com actually predicted the Red Sox picking. His defense is a little bit iffy, but offensively, he is a powerhouse. This year with Maryland, he hit 341 with a 445 on base percentage and a 697 slug. He had 24 home runs with 20 doubles. He also set a Maryland college record with 44 home runs in his first couple of years. And last year, he was the Cape Cod League MVP. On top of that, he's also a native of Massachusetts and went to Worcester Academy. He does seem to be slotted a bit earlier within the draft. A lot of people have him going within the top 10 if he doesn't, and the Red Sox do have a bit of luck involved. Again, this is a guy who's got a ton of power potential. This is a guy who's got a ton of hit potential. This is a guy who you could probably move off shortstop and still be okay. And this is a guy who coming out of college would be pretty quick to make an impact on the Boston Red Sox. So those are sort of the two players that come up the most when you're talking about talking about the philosophy of the Red Sox just simply taking the best bat available. Now let's talk about some other categories as well. The third sort of philosophy here is one that I know a lot of you guys are going to agree with, and that is taking a pitcher in the first round of the 2023 draft. So there are also a couple of guys linked to the Boston Red Sox that could be huge for the Red Sox pitching depth. The first guy's name is Thomas White. He's out of Phillips Academy in Massachusetts, so another Massachusetts native. White is the number one left left-handed pitching prospect in the 2023 draft. He is a high schooler, so it would take some time to develop, but he's currently sitting at a 92 to 97 mile an hour fastball. He is a really nasty curveball with 18 plus inches of break and a changeup that is thrown at 68 miles an hour. Now the changeup isn't exactly a super strong pitch, but because he's got that fast velo from the left-hand side, that changeup works really well to get swings and misses. It's definitely going to be something that the Red Sox, if they were to draft White, would have to develop further. White was projected to the Sox by the through the fence baseball blog, but most people have him going higher. Again, this would take some luck to get him down to the 14th pick, but if he is there, this could be a perfect match for the Boston Red Sox. And on top of that, the White wants to come to the Boston Red Sox. He grew up in Massachusetts. He said his dream was pitching for the Boston Red Sox. It would be a really cool story on top of that. The other pitcher that's mentioned a lot with the Red Sox first pick is a guy by the name of Hurston Wald rep. Now, Hurston is a college pitcher out of the Florida. He pitched for the Gators, and he's a guy who gets a ton of swings and misses. In fact, he had the eighth most strikeouts in all of college baseball in 2022, and in 2023, he got a ton of swings and misses as well. He's got a really high velo fastball from the right-hand side that sits in the high 90s, sometimes even topping out over 100 miles an hour. Then he's got a disgusting curveball that some people even say is his best pitch. It's a pitch he gets a ton of swings and misses on. He's got a slider as well and a changeup that he uses from time to time. He's a guy who tries to paint all the corners of the zone and go to every quadrant. There is one concern with him though, and that is the fact that he tends to lose command a bit. In fact, in 2023, the reason why his ERA was a bit inflated was because of how many walks he was giving up. It seemed like every time he was giving up runs, it was because he was finally getting hit and people were already on base because of his walk. So there is a bit of a command concern concern with Hurston Waldrap, but his potential is as a high value top of the line starting pitcher because he already has 
the arsenal to do that they just need to try and reel in his command and if the red sox believe they can do that he could immediately slot into this red sox system possibly even in double a because he's coming out of college and be in the majors fairly quickly as well as fairly quickly becoming the number one pitching prospect in the red sox system so those are the two biggest names mentioned when we are talking about the red sox philosophy of drafting pitchers now the last one i want to talk about today is the possibility of the red sox going into the first round of 2023 and drafting a catcher now the catching position on the current red sox team seems to be okay right connor wong is great defensively he's mediocre offensively and then you got reese mcguire as a backup but throughout the red sox system there isn't a ton of catching depth there is a possibility that they take the best catcher available in the first round to sort of bolster that depth within this system and the two options that we see mentioned a lot is one blake mitchell blake mitchell is the number one catching prospect in this year's draft he's a high school catcher out of texas who is a defensive menace behind the plate super athletic with a natural ability to frame and block pitches he also has a cannon of an arm and while pitching in high school he hit 95 miles an hour on the gun possible two-way player maybe at the plate he's also very very powerful he's got pull power he's got opposite field power he does have a bit of issue with his plate discipline but hey the kid's in high school right that's something you can work on him with if the red sox do want to go with a catcher in the first round this is a guy who's super athletic and a guy who would take a little bit of luck to get down to the 14th pick but if available would be an awesome option the other option for the red sox in terms of catchers is a guy by the name of kyle teal he is a collegiate catcher out of the university of virginia who is very good defensively behind the plate and at the plate in the batter's box he hit 407 last year with a 475 on base percentage and a 655 slug he had 13 home runs 25 doubles in 65 games so a little bit of issue with his plate discipline like the other kid we talked about in this section but he does have a pretty decent power stroke he's good defensively and again if the red sox want to bolster their catching depth within this system this is a guy who could come in and pretty immediately make an impact at a bit of a higher level than if you were to draft someone in high school so those are kind of the big four philosophies that i think the red sox will choose in the 2023 draft i think it'll be one of these four options one of these four categories now if i was in charge of drafting for the 2023 red sox i would probably still go with the most athletic choice but I really like the idea of the Red Sox going after college pitcher Hurston Waldrep. I think that he has the, a really, really high potential to be very good at the major league level. Plus, he's a collegiate pitcher, so you would be able to bring him up faster than you would a high school pitcher. And I do also really like the idea of going after a catcher as well. I think that in my opinion my list of guys i would draft if i was in charge would go waldrep one of the two shortstops in college or blake mitchell but it's going to take some luck for them to get that so let me know in the comment section down below who would you draft is it someone on this list is it someone else you've been eyeing is there anyone that you think the red sox should go after plus what do you think the red sox philosophy should be of the 2023 mlb draft let me know all your thoughts on this draft preview in the comment section down below as always if you made it to the end of this video do me a favor make sure you guys have hit that subscribe and that like button if you're new here we talk red sox content almost every single day also don't forget we are going to be live on this channel tomorrow night at 7 p.m eastern time thank you all very much for clicking on this one and i will see you in the red seats